All right, hey everyone. So, sorry for no face cam, but I'll be going through the video with you guys uh, about the six person bouts Righteous Feast, which is the very last Coliseum fight in order to get the trophy. This is, especially if you're going for platinum, uh, this is required to do. And I would say this is a bit tricky, especially if you don't have the accessories and my build will be in the end of the video. Um, but I'm going with the lineup of Tifa, Red, and Barrett for the first round. And then for the second round, it will be Yuffie, Cloud, and Aerith. And for the Yuffie, Cloud, and Aerith lineup, it is very similar to my last video, which is, I think it was the UPA challenge for the Coliseum fight or Arena Quest, whatever, whatever you would call it. It's pretty much me aiming for a, a Quake build. Uh, or you're just constantly spamming Quake. It's sort of similar uh, for... For here, but at the same time, instead of doing a Quake build, you could probably do a Blizzard build for Yuffie. But I didn't do that in this video. I still kind of stick with Quake. But in Cloud and Aerith, uh, rocked with uh, Blizzard. But anyway, that that's the most important thing that you want to really focus on and put a lot of time in. And, and thinking about or putting your lineups in is really the, the second round. Because the second round is really annoying. And there's many ways or maybe just a few ways to approach this challenge uh without using my build but you know because my build may be a bit difficult compared to some uh again i'll share my build at the end but all right let's just rock with it and in the first round i am using safety bit because safety bit is super important for the first round because especially how the jabberwock dragon will petrify your team uh during the fight so if you want to just keep on pressuring and damaging the dragon you you would need safety bit for for here so i just made safety bit for everyone uh in this lineup i may be pausing the video here and there so the video may be a bit longer uh so my approach to this fight here is is that we're gonna be going for this guy here and then we're gonna finish off with the i think mind flayer he's not as annoying i thought this fight would be hell but it's not if you actually know the strats immediately we're gonna be rocking with tifa and red red is gonna go uh for the dragon as well he's gonna help uh, assist tifa but tifa's gonna be our main dps gal over here so we're we're gonna be rocking with uh tifa and i am i think i'm rocking the tiger claws or something like that i'm rocking her highest gloves that rock uh, strength like for her dps i would say also it would be very useful if, if you are rocking her magic gloves but thing is you wouldn't be able to uh to do this certain technique which i will showcase uh very soon you, you'll see we're gonna be using uh un unfettered fury which helps put up the pressure while fighting these enemies again it will be very useful to use that ability with magic gloves or gloves that prioritize magic attack um, but in this case we we did it but You'll see why, why I prioritize strength over magic in this fight. Even though we're, we'll, we'll be casting fire uh, constantly on, on this dragon. Also, we're rocking enemy skill with Tifa. That's very important. That's one of the key, key material that you want to have for Tifa. And we have like an ATV build with her as well. So I'm going for Sonic Boom. Which, with Sonic Boom, you get a, a big buff uh, with, uh, for your magic and physical strength. And I, I do that because I will be casting a lot of... Uh, we'll be casting Fyraga. And I also gave Fyraga to Red as well. But, I also, but the important thing is uh, for Red is he'll be casting time. So keep a track on Red's... Uh, Red's ATB bars because um, you want to have. Oh yeah, when when okay, hold up. So with this whole scenario here, as as you see, when it cast the Gorgon Shield, and you saw how we were deflect, we were get our hits were being deflected from the dragon. In order to counter this move, you would want to immediately cast um, magic on it. I I think any magic works, but obviously you want to use what's very effective. Uh, to the enemy so it's fire uh, and that's why we have it for Tifa and Red but Red is very important as well because he'll be casting uh, stop uh, as soon as we stagger it because that's the most important technique of this fight especially if you want this to make this a bit more uh, easier All right. 
I just caught I just shot Fyra and not Fyraga because I was um I was conserving my uh, ATB bar with Tifa. I didn't want to use a whole uh, two ATB ATB bars because you use two ATB bars when casting the tier three magic. So once it's pressured, you're home free. You could honestly do this fight or the first round so quickly, but uh, things kind of went. There was uh, some weird, weird random stuff happening where the Mind Flayer all of a sudden aggro towards red. I don't know why. Typically when you're in this fight, that wouldn't happen and you're able to get the Jabberwock immediately. But since that happened, we kind of had to stall time a bit. I was supposed to cast time with red, but by now. So once we cast time, I'm building ATB with red. You want to use the unbridled uh, strength technique where you're always using unbridled strength just for using Omni Strike. Just put it to Omni Strike. Don't upgrade it to uh, or don't power up to, uh, I think, Rise and Fall. Only upgrade to Omni Strike. And you, you just want to keep spamming that as it's staggered. Oh yeah, and then we're also gonna having having that buff with Sonic Boom as well. Here, wait. Let me let me just uh, replay for you guys. My apologies. There's a lot of buffs that we're doing in the game, but once you understand the techniques, it's pretty much you you're home free. You could honestly do this in one whole sitting, but since but since the Mind Flayer messed us up, we weren't able to fully utilize Omni Strike and, and defeat the Jabberwock in one sitting, unfortunately. You don't want to stall too much time when it comes to this, so always uh, focus on trying to take down the Jabberwock uh, before you go towards the Mind Flayer or fight the Mind Flayer. And that's why I'm using Vengeance Mode on the Jabberwock, because I'm just trying to get this fight out of the way so we could fight um, Mind Flayer. Also, Bear's about to die, and I didn't put heal for him. I think Tifa's the only one. Tifa and Red only has heals, so that's why I'm trying to just uh, fight the Jabberwock immediately and take him out. So with the Mind Flayer, it gets pressured when you do Synergy abilities. Once that happens, you're kind of home free. Just like with the Jabberwock, we're, we're going to be using the same technique. We're going to use the Omni Strike spam with uh, Stop because you could get it in, again, in one sitting. Also, by the, by the time you're done fighting a Jabberwock, you should have a Synergy ability uh, that that Red and Tifa sh uh, should be using while you're providing DPS with Barret. And again, once it's pressured, it, it's, it's home free. And we also healed Barret just in case. Also, you could put healing for Barret. You could just replace one of the materials in my build, to be honest with you. This this fight could have been much better. I just got lazy on changing the material because this game does not have loadouts, and I, I wish it does because it I would have enjoyed this much more on creating builds. So, same thing. Literally the same technique. And the reason why we prioritize uh, the gloves that have physical strength or physical attack is so that we could defeat the boss in one sitting once it gets staggered. That's really it. Now this is the main fight where you really want to focus up. Sometimes you're going to get 
lucky on on here but for the most part this this is a uh, trial and error thing so remember to like really focus up because this this is a fight where you could easily mess up if if one move goes wrong in the beginning then it, it could change throughout the whole entire round and what we're gonna do is ATP boost Yuffie and Aerith and because we want to aim to get Radiant Ward and Arcane Ward and also have uh, have enough for Yuffie where she has uh, she's able to do abilities such as casting haste on her so that she could gain a lot of ATB um, and potentially also get doppelganger or have her boomerang or I guess her shuriken to prioritize uh, elemental weaknesses on them. By the way, when you're Aerith in the beginning of the game, because this I found this happening sometimes towards me, where when when I'm Aerith, I'm trying to ATP boost. Um, Zoo could just swoop in and uh, interrupt you, and that messes up everything. So you don't want that. You, you don't want that to happen. You want to be Aerith and ACB boost right away. Reason why Radiant Ward is also so important because when you're casting uh, in the middle or within the radius of the Radiant Ward is it's the fact that you don't take damage from it or you, you can't be interrupted. Uh, once you're casting so this applies for all of the members so as long as they're casting in the radiant ward it's what makes this move really really good and then mix it up with arcane ward my goodness this is why Aerith is one of like the best characters in the game with arcane ward your uh your character cast is like or your character is able to cast an um a second spell without using mp So, for example, like if you're using Arcane Ward, because uh, uh, I think Malboro is weak to um, Blizzard. So, if someone's casting Blizzard and Radiant Ward mixed in with Arcane Ward, not only you get iframes uh, when casting, but also you're able to cast two Blizzards on the enemy, and one without using any MP, which again makes it really, really good. So we're trying to aggro Malboro here, away from the party, and we, we were able to successfully do that. And this is where I just kind of want to stagger Malboro, even though we don't have uh, Arcane Ward just yet, we're kind of building it up. Radiant Ward is also important because Aerith is able to do DPS much faster uh, with her, the way she uses her wand. Um, I guess, I, I guess, or her staff, I mean. It is a better way to gain ATB with Aerith because ATB is really, really important in this fight. And also, keep an eye out on Yuffie's HP, which I was doing because Yuffie's probably one of the weakest characters when it comes to HP. She's very fragile. She, has, she doesn't have a ton of HP. Now, I didn't fully upgrade my HP materia for Yuffie, but... Regardless, uh, I think her defense is low as well, so always prioritize her, uh, especially if, uh, or like, especially if she's like near death on uh, when it comes to her. So we're casting Arcane Ward, but with Yuffie, we don't have heal with her. You could honestly take out fire and um, poison for Yuffie in, in this fight. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of giving her uh, giving her uh, heals. Kind of a dumb move on me. I, again, it's like sometimes when I'm making these builds, I just I swear brute force them. Now this is the annoying phase because of uh, because of I think Zoo or Zoo casting the the AOEs and also this um, this move called the Fire Prison or something like that. And I think in order to counter this, which I didn't really have a decent build for, neither is all my elements, elemental materia maxed, maybe, maybe it's not maxed, um, but if you want to counter this, I think if you have elemental materia slotted on your arm, armor, on your armor slots, uh, and then if it's linked with arrow, you you should be able to tank and absorb the elemental attacks like the tornadoes and the wind AOEs from Zoo while fighting Malboro. 
but I didn't do that in this fight, so. That's why it's gonna be an interesting fight to showcase to you guys. So I'm using... Yeah, I'm also doing the same strat from the first round on stopping, using stop. Yeah, this is... it is horrible. Now I did use Limit Break for Yuffie at the last second so that she could be able to be immune and have these iframes and avoid Zoo's attacks. But this is one of the most annoying rounds I ever did. I was very frustrated with this, with this round, but I was able to manage to go through it. See, it's just so annoying with Zoo doing that. Now, typically in this fight, so I want to let everyone know um, that, sorry if I keep pausing the video, I'm, I'm just trying to inform everyone so they could, you know, you don't have to fight like me and you could change up your build, but know that I was trying to aim for the doppelganger, the doppelganger strat, and use Quake or any sort of elemental with Yuffie, you know, to really put out damage. But since there was a lot of problems uh, throughout the round already, uh, I wasn't able to do so. So I was really uh, relying on Cloud and Aerith to be casting Blizzaga, and Aerith is kind of like our main, our main girl here, where she's gonna be supporting us with heals also she does have the empowerment buff which you're able to provide physical like a physical attack buff or a magic buff uh, to your party members which is very very important and i do recommend giving you yuffie blizzard or, or something like that um, in this fight so that Aerith could cast empowerment uh, to Yuffie and Yuffie is able to use Doppelganger and Blizzard towards these enemies more so to the great Malboro since Malboro is the really annoying one well I mean they're both annoying but Mal Malboro is actual is the actual threat here but I wasn't again I wasn't able to do do that in this video this is why it's a very interesting showcase I was really thinking what I could do with Yuffie at this moment. But like I said before, always try to like build Yuffie up with the doppelganger. So this is the move that gets really annoying because and the strat I was uh, when I was trying to figure out this round, the strat was to just always try to constantly pressure or stagger or stun uh, the great Malboro. But the thing is, he will always use this move no matter what. It doesn't... I, I think it doesn't matter. Unless you find another way to really do high DPS on him. Malboro will always find a way to use it and slip this in somehow. That's why I was casting Blizzard, uh, you know, on, on this beast. But yeah, this move will be annoying because uh, it will always put down your health throughout the entire fight or for a certain amount of time, which is gonna be a, a pretty long time so which is why Aerith also has magnify and and heals and I'm always using her limit break with healing wind uh, a lot of the time I I don't bother casting regen because that barely helps uh, so I just always cast a Kiraga at a certain moment throughout the fight You could block the AoEs from Zoo, but it's it was such a mess on screen I couldn't even tell like what was going on. And unfortunately Yuffie died as I was on the command screen. So we do have Rays with Cloud. I do recommend also putting Rays for Aerith, just in case. If that's possible. I forgot how the build works. And then during the middle of all this chaos. Um, Zoo is uh, casting Swan Song, and you never want to make Zoo be chilling with Swan Song because once Swan Song is over, if you're not able to do damage on the left wing and right wing, because you're supposed to eliminate those two to stop the the uh, its ultimate, because it will one shot your party members, 
and you don't want that to happen too. Remember when that happens. And sometimes camera doesn't focus on Zoo when using Swan Song. It depends on the situation, I guess, because sometimes the camera is, is kind of weird in this game. And um, if you're doing moves or whatever, the camera doesn't focus on on Zoo if it's doing Swan Song. The game tries to focus on Zoo because this is such an important move to to know that like, hey, you're about to die soon. Sometimes the camera bugs out and, and doesn't focus the camera on, on Zoo because you're doing so many attacks all at once that, uh, yeah, the camera just bugs out. It's weak to Lightning, so we'll be using Cloud and Aerith uh, in this fight. I mean, also, if you have synergy abilities or like, or most likely like you should use Limit Breaks if you can, because it's it will be tough uh, while you're fighting Malboro and then King Zoo manages to uh, sneak in a, a swan song um, at the last second and you don't want that to happen at all while fighting Malboro. Like, just take him out immediately when this happens. Leave it to me. Well, I mean, we're, I mean, take out the... stop the swan song, I mean. But our priority is still stopping Malboro because Malboro could uh, do weird de uh, debuffs to you, which you don't want to do, or have, I mean. Also, um, I was about to say, I, I think I am rocking immunity from being a toad. Aerith is rocking a ribbon, and you earned that from the UPA challenge, and then Cloud and Yuffie are rocking the white cape, which grants immunity from being a toad, because uh, Malboro's the, the only one um, that is able to, like, in this fight, that makes you <clears throat> into a toad. If you do mess up, obviously, you, you just never want to get hit by, like, any sort of breath from Malboro. So Malboro was almost dead, and I was quite relieved seeing this, but never want to sleep on the opponent. So I was just trying to get this over with at this point. Yeah, casting Faith on Cloud to see if I could... Or, actually, Yuffie, what? Okay. I guess I'm building up for Yuffie now. Because I, I think I'm going in for using Quake. Because when you use Quake, uh, you're able to keep stunning um, Zoo. And this is so annoying with the, the prison attack. I'm not going to bother to pause anymore. You already know the strat. Once you're just fighting King Zhu uh, by by himself, it's it's kind of donezo already. You're, you're home free, hopefully. There's no, like, special gimmick other than Swan Song in this fight. Oh yeah, by the way, this, is, this difficulty is all in dynamic difficulty. Uh, I did not bother to play this in hard mode because that's even... Uh, more hell to go through. I think that's also one of the most important strats to, to do, especially if you're just trying to go for platinum. You don't get punished for changing the difficulty to easy or, or normal, so um, I just showcase in a dynamic difficulty to, to see how it is on, um, to see how it is and showcase it to you guys how the mechanics are like, because uh, I think they all play differently, because I know hard mode has different mechanics. It's it's somewhat like a little bit different uh, mechanics to go through on hard mode compared to normal mode. So dynamic difficulty is at its it's pro dynamic difficulty is maybe similar to normal as well, but it's not as gruesome compared to uh, hard mode. I guess this is a, a little, I'll say my little goodbye, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to drop a like and subscribe. Uh, if, you, if you're enjoying these guys, guide videos, let me know. I'll, I'll continue to make more. I'm still working on my platinum. Uh, and yeah, I told you this was an interesting video, right? Considering I didn't use the elemental materia build. Um, also, again, this is my first time. I was able to do this in five minutes, but we were yapping for like 20 plus minutes. My apologies, but I had to run it down for y'all. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll be, uh, I'll be showcasing the builds at the end. I, I did not forget about it. So look forward to that. And feel free to use it as a blueprint because 
not every materia slot in there is meant for this this matchup so feel free to kind of change it up a bit but i hope you guys get the sense of how this fight goes and i hope you guys succeed on it you're not going to do this in the first try maybe you will this is a more so a trial and error thing and trying to understand the mechanics of the fight overall uh the first fight was fun second fight it was it was gruesome unless you have the elemental elemental materia slotted um in your armor slot linked with arrow that will probably avoid it yeah if you have any other shots feel free to comment down below or if you have any questions feel free to comment but remember drop a like subscribe and i may do a hard mode playthrough for um for some youtube streams we'll see but thank you guys for watching peace out hope you guys have a great day